Greetings, folks, and welcome to the live launch party for Spiffing, my uh, my new cosmic horror novella. Uh, it's out now from Red Cake Publishing. Um, down here, this little thing scrolling about, my book dot two my book dot two forward slash spiffing uh that's the universal link which will take you to amazon where you could get a hold of a copy right uh i think we're all set tonight i've got party poppers i've got my little thing i've even got octopus wearing party hats uh so what more can you ask for um Tonight, I will, we will have a prize draw, but the, the draw will be on another day. But tonight, for anybody who's viewing, uh, all you've got to do to be entered into that draw is just message, just comment on the video with the phrase. I'm sure people who've tuned into these before will know the phrase already. It is, give me a Fatagan book. Okay, so get that down in the comments and you will be in, entered into the prize draw. The lucky winner will get one of three lovely signed copies of these real ones not the not the proof copies uh obviously <laughs> all right tonight i will do q a later on uh so if you have any questions about the novella or just about any of whatever just anything you want to ask me basically uh get it down in the comments uh and i will be i also have some special guests this evening um yes so tonight i have been joined um by pj and leanne from red cape publishing and i'll bring them on now hello guys how are you doing Hi. Uh, <laughs> yeah so yeah it's, <laughs> yeah hello again Hi. <laughs> saying it like i've never spoken to you in ages <laughs> yeah so um yeah do you want to just tell us a little bit about how red cape sort of started yeah i mean how long have you been around now um well it started after i got ill yeah but... <laughs> officially well registered probably two and a half years right um but it was only the start of last year that we take started taking on other authors um yeah. before that it was just my own stuff and we started on anthologies and design work and bits and pieces um yeah. no at the start of last year we took on the first one and yeah it's been sort of growing since then now yeah <laughs> yeah no it's uh yeah because i've um because i i i noticed you because david like poked me and said have you checked out these guys because i spotted the uh the series of anthologies you've been doing yeah oh the a to z yeah that's a cool uh, idea that that's yeah he cool yeah, said about that and he said about you living nearby and that we should uh still yeah, work on know, something <laughs> yes but yeah no the series is going well we're just going through submissions at the moment for j is for jack-o-lantern so the next <laughs> yeah, one is, the, the problem the problem i've had is that ever since i've noticed that known about it <laughs> all the ones are ones that i i can't think of anything for jack-o-lanterns <laughs> right <laughs> i did think maybe some tentacles coming out of a pumpkin but i don't yeah. know yeah I, I just couldn't make it work <laughs> it's just, yeah no, like the first one i spotted was genies but again oh yeah blank yeah completely genius blank. was a bit of a hard one actually yeah we didn't mm. get some uh, i think it was um that was a bit of a challenge and it was hard to get enough variety in there there were loads of stories that were pretty much the same thing yeah so yeah that's the problem tough. i think that's the problem i have with it because i like to try and do something different yeah and for me i could only think of two or three stories i could do with a genie yeah well, david you know, i imagine there's a lot more he could do but my brain could only think of like the yeah. two the obvious two you know <laughs> yeah yes yeah, so what was the one you did after that was it hell yeah we did or hell was, that was yeah. probably the i think that was the most popular we had 120 questions yeah. for that um nice. and yeah. then internet jack-o-lanterns just closed so we're going through that i think we've got about 60 subs to read and then no. uh k is for kidnap is open now <laughs> wants to submit <laughs> k is for kidnap that's going to be cheerful isn't it yes <laughs> yeah they're not happy stories oh brilliant <laughs> yeah i hadn't seen that one at all oh, right. <laughs> oh god k is for kidnap. <laughs> oh i might have to have a crack at that <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i could probably come up with something for that one yeah 
<laughs> yeah, because uh, you said you started it out with um, basically like doing like doing your own stuff. Because I've noticed you've been quite yeah. prolific. Like you've got quite a few like collections and things like that out. I've actually got yeah, a couple of them on my reader. I oh, okay. <laughs> my to be read piles like <laughs> enormous, yeah. and I will get round to them at some point. <laughs> yeah, and no, I've got quite a few out, um, and four, I think four that are half written. Um, nice. So yeah, it will take a take a while. It's just finding time. <laughs> I try and cl- keep Fridays clear for writing now because I tried right. to write a bit each day thing and it just doesn't work. So. Yeah. No, yeah, I imagine but, it because there's a lot of work in it with publishing, and like, because I can I can attest the amount of work you put into promotion. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's a lot. Everywhere of I've looked, I've seen my book. It's been amazing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> At least it's good to yeah. see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the audio version of Spiffing's being recorded now, so that shouldn't be too long. The guy's oh. really good. He's the guy did one of mine recently. So good job. I think he'll uh, he'll fit the book well. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, I look forward to it. I've heard a couple of my stories done in audiobook, and I was a bit, I was a bit dubious to begin with because I, I, I just thought, you know, it's very weird hearing like your words in somebody yeah. else's voice. It is but uh, but the the guy who did these ones, the ones I've heard, actually nailed it. And I was right. like, oh, yeah, brilliant. It's just really strange. It's a, I, I imagine other authors get that. It's like yeah, hearing no, your own well, words coming out of somebody else's mouth is really yeah. strange. <laughs> the first, I think the first one that I had done, it was really, yeah, it was quite surreal. And the guy oh, did a really David. good job. Yeah, David, David Sweeney Bear. Yeah, David Sweeney Bear did, did four or five of mine. Nice. Um, yeah, he did a really good job, such a good job to the point there was one review saying, praising the fact that I'd used various narrators because he did so many different accents. They thought it was different people. <laughs> so, brilliant. Yeah, pretty oh, good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the one I've heard, uh, the um, which I've got to say, of last year, it was one of my favourite books I read last year, was The, the Vegas Rift. Yes. Ah. I really, really enjoyed that. That was right up my street. Pro- right, incredibly weird. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah, it's one book I could, like, you know, you know, when you read, you can sometimes see where things are going. And yeah. I honestly didn't have a bloody clue in that book because nope. it just it just started here and went all the way over there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm hoping there'll be a sequel soon. I know it's being written, but yeah. I don't know how far in nice. he is. Um, but yeah, because you listened to the audio, didn't you? Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, yeah, it's really. I, I'm halfway through it at the moment. Right. I, I keep because obviously I'm not. Go, I listen to audio books when I go out. Right. <laughs> Lockdown. I haven't really been outside, so it's just like <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been to the chemist and back, and that's about it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But no, you guys, gonna do a great job on it. Yeah. Yeah, and also I've, I've got to I've got to bring up because uh, I know you, you you guys are involved in the organisation of the Brighton Book Fair. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We are. Yes. That's going to be good. Yeah. Yes, I'm yes. hoping so. Yeah, I'm hoping yeah. it will be busier than usual with people finally allowed out and being able to do. You'd hope, wouldn't you? Like people, yeah. oh, freedom. It could yeah. go the other way completely, and there'd be nobody there. But yeah, we'll buy books off each other anyway. So. Yeah, we always <laughs> exactly. I'm I'm going to make sure I'm going to save up all my pocket money for a while because I know exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. I'm yeah, gonna, I always I'm going to go than there me. with the books I intend to sell, and I'm going to come home with. More books than I went with. You know, yes. it's gonna yeah, happen. It's he does that. that. Yeah, every he time. I've still got some from the yeah. first one years ago that I haven't read yet. They just sort of sat on the shelf. And... Yeah. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> another one then with the Mount Everest Mount to be read. Part. Yeah. Oh, there's, I think, about 300, <laughs> 300 paperbacks yeah. I haven't read and probably another 500 on the Kindle. But yeah. get to them oh, one sounds day. Sounds about right. Yeah. One yeah. day. I've got a problem. <laughs> I can't. I can't walk past the bookshop without going in and buying something. As you, <laughs> you know, charity yeah. shops as well. Charity. Yeah. We talked about this, haven't we? We yes, both we, we both do the trolling around the charity shops. Yeah, so. yeah. We say it's weird because you find different things in different towns. Yeah. Because I said like Haywards Heath was really good for horror books. Yeah. And I was finding all the first editions and all this stuff, but yeah. round here there's there's nothing. So. <laughs> Yeah, and I was saying basically Hove, you get Mills and Boone. 
lots yeah. and lots of meals Imagine. and food in Hove. Yeah. <laughs> like yes. tons of it. <laughs> and fifty shades of grey. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Fifty shades of grey and Dan Brown mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dan oh, Dan yeah. Brown. Uh, every charity <laughs> every charity shop yeah. without fail. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um so how long's the that book fair thing been going on? Um the first one was oh god, it's ages ago, wasn't it? Three. 2017? 17? Well, nothing happened last year. <laughs> 18. Maybe 80. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, it was. It was. Yeah, no, it was 2018 because we did Brilliant. the Christmas one, at, Christmas one at the open market, which is when Tony and I came and stayed. Oh, yeah, Tony. So, yeah, so that would have been the May 2018. We did the one at the All Saints. We did it at the All Saints in Hove. Yeah. Oh yes, they are down around the corner yeah. from you. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did it there as a trial one because it was small and cheap, and see if anyone came. Um, and they didn't really, but we've ramped it up since then. So we got a better venue and better advertising. I suppose is probably what does it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, so we've been at the the Unitarian Church opposite Pavilion Gardens since then. Obviously, last year was a wipeout. Yeah. Um, but no, it's a good venue. God. There's a kitchen and toilets and it's central and there's a lot of passing trade. Yeah. So pub over the road. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pub over the road. Couple of pubs over the road. Yes. Sorted. Yes. Well, there's two we had pubs a few right authors, across actually. The uh right. not last year, but year before, we had a few authors set their books out out the front. Oh, and yeah. they were grabbing themselves spritzers from the bar across the road. Yeah. That no, was funny. Yeah. 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 Don't blame them, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, because you've got Fitz Herberts and the Mashton, haven't you, right? Directly yeah. opposite. And then you've yeah, got the Wagon and Horses who do horses. some fantastic gins just over yeah. the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's always where I go if I'm going to a gig down at the Dome. I always go in the Wagon and Horses and load up on the gin. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah, you don't want nice to, to try and buy a pint in the Dome. It'll cost you, like, you need to take out a mortgage yeah. to buy a pint. No, uh, we went Wagon and Horses... It might have been my birthday or something when we went round the lanes and went in there and they do quite a lot of whiskies. And yeah, then... whiskies and gins. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. It's uh yeah. It's the say yeah, it's the, the group the group of people who own it is a they own a few pubs and they all specialise in whiskey, gins and rums. Right. Oh. Hmm. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Good to know. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, I'm looking forward to that because uh, for the viewers, uh, I will be attending uh, and I will be sharing a good table with David Green. So that's going to be like, comedy gold. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Beavis and Butthead of indie writing. <laughs> I don't know which one of us is Beavis. Well, I was going to put them in that back room. Yeah. Because there's a separate room at the back so they could just have the room nice i like it yeah and yeah, I, no. I also i also believe Gemma paul's going as well uh she's like, not now no. is she not now oh, that's no, a shame. she was and now she's not no right uh no. yeah and there's uh um, peter germany's going as well isn't he i've seen um i think he's think. Think or at least he was high. thinking yeah. of, at least he was thinking about it yeah he came yeah. by last to the last one we did i mm. think i can't keep yeah. track of it I'm missing some but um no he did come by and say hello and buy some books last time yeah. um because he's only kent somewhere yeah yeah um yeah. but yeah and it should be good it's quite a mix um a few children's authors and there's a few sort of local crime ones and some nice. bits and pieces. yeah so, yeah no it's, it's cool. uh, Usually get a good attendance. Fairly good. Lou will be there. Lou Yardley. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. So, nice. Yeah. yeah. No, it should, should be, be great. Good. It should be great fun. Well, yeah. guys. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, and thank you again oh, for amazing <laughs> spiffing. You know. Yes. <laughs> no you worries. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll uh, take care. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Um, Right then, yeah, so that was PJ and Leanne from Red Cape Publishing. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to do you a, a little reading, a little excerpt uh, of spiffing. Uh, again, if you want to be entered into the prize draw, 
Uh, you probably know the drill by now, but if not, if you want to be entered into the prize draw, that's what you t just comment that. Give me a Fatagan book and you'll be entered. Entered? Entered? Entered. Um, <laughs> what's wrong with me? <laughs> uh, also, yeah, uh, I'll be doing a short Q&A after the reading. So if anybody has any questions, just get them down in the comment section and I will answer them as we go along. OK. Right. So I'm going to start with a little bit from chat. We're going to do chapter one and then a little bit from chapter two. OK, so it opens with a quote from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The game is afoot. It was a bright and tranquil evening and the sun was slowly sinking behind the rolling Cornish hills. Chaikus Manor was slowly being enveloped by creeping shadows off the trees to its rear. The stout front doors stood slightly ajar as jazz music drifted out into the early dusk. Outside, a sickly looking man of around 35 in rumpled Oxford bags and a pair of black rimmed spectacles steadied himself against the winding stone banister. He puffed enthusiastically, almost medicinally, on a crumpled woodbine. After a deep drag, he tipped his head back and exhaled with a satisfied sigh. From the welcomingly warm interior came a cadaverous old man dressed in black. He stealthily walked up behind the unsteady character with his gloved hands outstretched. Resting one of his trembling paws gently upon the man's shoulder, he asked, Feeling better now, sir? In a formal manner that betrayed a slight American twang. The old fellow gestured towards a large puddle of pink vomit that trickled down the old stone gutter. The sickly sweet smell of regurgitated strawberries, cream and champagne drifted on the breeze. Yes, thank you, Simpkins. I'm much better now. The man's voice sounded like gravel due to his acid ravaged larynx. Spiffing party, what? He continued, suddenly brightening. Simpkins, the long suffering butler, merely grunted and purred. Indeed, sir. Then shuffled back indoors. The slender gentleman's gentleman muttered oaths quietly under his breath as he tramped back inside, leaving the drunken man swaying and grinning inanely. As the shadows lengthened and shrouded the entrance to the weed-choked drain, a large shiny black beetle emerged and seemed to regard the man with some degree of curiosity. After a moment, it clacked its mighty mandibles in contempt at the foolish creature on the steps, then scuttled back into its cosy hole. A long, curved gravel driveway led away from the door towards the only road that passed the stately pile. In the distance, a motley collection of kitchen staff, cleaners and maids could be seen crunching their way wearily towards the road and the village beyond. They were all thankful that their hellish day was finally over. Each one of them muttered a silent prayer that they didn't have to stick around for the remainder of the party. They all knew their employer well enough to know that come midnight, the revels would be loud, drunken and debauched. In fact, everyone within a 15 mile radius knew about the owner and his spiffing parties. Chaikus Manor in North Cornwall had been the family seat of the Lexicon Browns for generations. It sat nestled betwixt rolling hills and an ancient stretch of woodland, alone and isolated. The nearest village was three miles down the road, so the master of the house didn't have to worry about disturbing anyone when he was raising hell. Tonight, a party was in full swing in celebration of the current master of the house's 40th birthday. Rumour had it amongst the staff that Bertie Lexington Brown had something big planned for the evening. He had a reputation for really pushing the boat out at events like this. This only meant one thing for certain, that there would be a whole load of cleaning to be done on the morrow and a whole load of sore heads and upset stomachs. A jazz quartet comprised of Bertie's closest school chums, Bongo, Stevens, Charlie Boy and Rufus, had set up in one corner of the cavernous and lavishly furnished main hall. Chaikus Manor was a sprawling 16th century pile and its decor matched its antiquity. The walls were painted in deep reds and golds, and the hardwood floors outfitted with decorative rugs. The band was on rare form, and in full swing, 
belting out the Charleston with gusto. Two smartly turned out gentlemen sat on a luxurious leather couch bookended by a pair of magnificent aspidistras. Their mouths hung agape in appreciation of the unexpected spectacle unfolding before them. The younger of the two men, a playboy and motor mechanic named Dave Potter, turned to his dapper companion with a broad grin on his face. It's remarkable, isn't it? The effect of the perceived anonymity of the mask, I mean. Don't you think, old boy? Dave's thin pencil moustache twitched with excitement and he flashed a gap-toothed grin as they watched the temptresses formerly known as Mrs Slater, Miss Tailforth and Professor Penrose enact their decidedly lewd, topless performance of the flapper's favourite dance, the Charleston. The heels of their T-strapped shoes were clacking and clopping like hooves in a wildly choreographed dressage contest. Remarkable. Yes, sir. That's one word for it, old chap. His stout companion, the redoubtable Dr. Sullivan, replied, nearly choking on his cognac. Mere moments before the outbreak of this titillating display, the three usually demure ladies had been dancing, fully clothed and self-conscious. This had changed in a heartbeat, almost exactly as the old grandfather clock struck eight. The evening's proceedings had shifted towards the risque when the youngest of the group, party girl and socialite, Virginia Tailforth, discovered a pile of masquerade masks lying on the minibar. There was an impromptu rugby scrum of whispering and childish giggling before the three scurried into the adjacent library and closed the door. After a short period of furtive activity, the ladies reappeared unencumbered by dresses, braziers and inhibitions. All three tipsy ladies seemed to be labouring under the mistaken assumption that they were now completely incognito. Each was clad in identical peacock feather headbands, black feather boas and bejeweled mask. None of the inebriated dancers could seemingly fathom that it didn't take Hercule Poirot to work out who was who, surrounded as they were by partners and longtime friends. This is very interesting from a psychological perspective, Dr. Sullivan told his leery companion as his ruddy cheeks and walrus moustache fluttered with excitement. It must be some subconscious effect of having the face hidden, like a child who covers its face and thinks you can't see them because they can't see you. From this display, it makes one wonder what a man without a face would get up to. Mischief, I'd wager. Cut the psycho babble, Doc, Potter grinned. Just check out the um, tan lines on the professor. Oi, that's my fiance you're talking about, you rotten cad. Sullivan bellowed, puffing out his tweed encased chest in mock outrage that quickly morphed into a wolfish and smugly satisfied grin. I know, you lucky old devil, Potter chortled. No luck needed, dear boy, Sullivan said proudly. What woman could resist my animal charm? Sullivan gave a guffaw of self-mockery and flexed his pudgy biceps. Talking of being a lucky devil, how goes it with the divine Miss Tailforth? Oh, you know, Potter sighed, hot and cold. He paused for a second. Well, from volcanic eruption to arctic winds, to be more precise, the damn woman is as changeable as a politician's promises. One minute she's all over me like a rash and the next. Potter shrugged and took a hearty gulp of brandy. The mechanic was far more at home in a pair of oil streaked overalls than the sports coat he currently wore. But even Sullivan would have to concede that the young rascal scrubbed up well. Ah, oh, well, not to worry, old chap. Sullivan patted Potter on the knee roughly. Women are fickle creatures. She'll come around eventually. Look at it this way. Most men would kill just to be in the same room as such a beauty. Never mind having her all over them, as you say, like a rash. The grin reappeared on Mr. Potter's face. That's true enough, he said with a nudge and a wink. His mood continued to brighten as he watched a lithe form prance and caper. So, what's your professional opinion of the shy and retiring Mrs. Slater over there shaking her bits and bobs? The doctor asked his motor enthusiast friend breaking his rapt concentration. Not bad at all, I must admit. A few miles on the clock, certainly, but not yet completely clapped out. 
I think we are lucky that she's only had one careful owner. What? <laughs> Both men erupted into fits of hysterical laughter at Potter's quip. Oh, watch it. Potter barked suddenly. Here comes Stan. Stanley Slater came in from the night air and began to weave across the room towards Sullivan and Potter. He had found a straw boater somewhere on his drunken meanderings and had perched it on his neatly trimmed short back and sides at a jaunty angle. His pinched cheeks and sensible spectacles gave him the look of a vicar that had imbibed one too many at the summer fete. Seemingly refreshed from his violent evacuation, Slater grabbed a high fluted glass of champers off the bar and popped a strawberry in his mouth before taking a revitalizing gulp. He waddled his way over to the two giggling men on the sofa. So what are you pair of reprobates giggling about? He asked with a boozy grin. Blimey, he exclaimed as his drifting eyes fixed on the dancing girls. Is that my bally wife? Sullivan and Potter both grabbed a shoulder and plonked him down on the sofa with a glass in his hand before he could intervene. Sullivan put a finger on his lips and gestured towards the girls. Think of it as an experiment, dear boy. Those masks seem to have altered their perception somewhat. Hey? Slater scratched his head. That daft lot seem to think we don't know who is who, Potter explained in layman's terms. Personally, I prefer to look at it as a demonstration of the effects of alcohol and cocaine on ladies in their prime. Well, whatever you call it, Slater summed up, it's dashed fine entertainment. As the band's tempo increased, the hotter under the collar the trio became. This, in turn, made the dancing quicken. The three men grinned like lecherous teenagers as the Charleston neared its climax. Faster and faster, wilder and wilder it went. Then suddenly, a blood-curdling scream put a decisive halt to the revels. The shaken form of Sylvia Lexita Brown appeared on the landing in a hysterical state, wearing a look of utter horror on her rounded features. Come quickly! Something ghastly has happened to Bertie! Right, I'm going to leave it there. That was chapter one. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, yes. So that was uh, from Spiffing, which is out now from Red Cape Publishing. Uh, again, that's how you get hold of it now is my book two uh, forward slash Spiffing. Uh, yeah, you might have guessed that I, I may have been uh watching Jeeves and Worcester and Agatha Christie at the time <laughs> and I got I got to thinking you know I, this is this is based in my answer to that question that nobody has ever asked or probably will ever ask what would the love child of H.P. Lovecraft Agatha Christie and P.G. Woodhouse be like there, there's your answer it's spiffing <laughs> yeah uh i've had some reviews in already i'm really really pleased uh with the reviews i've been having for it uh well i say like thank you to the people who have reviewed it uh it's much appreciated okay let's have a look if there's any comments uh right hello callum cheers for cheers for tuning in mate thank you very much <laughs> chris hewitt says give me a drocking book just to be awkward yeah uh yeah, <laughs> drocking language. <laughs> Do you, would you like that book with or without fish jizz? And sorry, <laughs> uh, Michelle River says hello, hello, Michelle. Thank you for joining me. Oh yes, uh, Callum says about the A to Z anthologies from Red Cape. Uh, says the A to Z anthologies are a great idea, and he keeps him meaning to sub something. Yeah, me too. It's just, yeah, I, I I only found out about them, like I said, when they're subjects I just, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll get a sub and you think, oh, that's interesting. And then you sit there and just stare at a blank page for days and nothing happens in your head. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yep. Oh, you finally, finally turned up. Yeah, sorry about the delay for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, just to sort of... Uh, yeah, Torna won a copy of Burning Reflection uh, just after Christmas or just before Christmas. I can't remember which, uh, when we went into like the second major lockdown. So it's taken me to like a couple of weeks ago to actually post it. But I'm glad you got it. I'm glad it, I'm glad you found it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, where the bear the bear? 
Oh, uh, the Crystal Cave of Wonders. Yeah, the, you can't actually see, but there is a hell of a lot of octopus here. In fact, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight octopus here. Uh, here's the smallest one. Yeah. <laughs> The biggest one's over there. It's too big. Won't fit here. But uh, yeah. here's the most sinister one. He's awesome, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There. Some people think that I like bought. I bought all this sort of stuff specially for the readings and stuff. It's not. Basically, my I buy Halloween decorations. And they go up, and they they never come down. Uh. Yeah, my my uh, my flat kind of looks like uh, the old yeah, looks like the electric ballroom in London in 1985. Does it looks like an alien sex fiend gig in here? So <laughs> it's just uh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, <laughs> other people reading your stories. Yes, I read one of yours, didn't I, Callum? I really enjoyed that. I need to, I need to find that and actually put that. I need to put that on the YouTube. The YouTube. Listen to me. Oh, hi, Neen. Glad you made it. Yeah. Good morning in Australia. What is it? Something like half past six in the morning or something ridiculous over there. <laughs> Mendo's. <laughs> what are you talking about, you pillock? <laughs> uh, okay. I Oh, that's a good question. How many personal rewrites and edits did it take before you were happy with the final result? Well, that one, uh, Spiffing, is actually one of the first, it, I think it is the first novella length thing I wrote. Um, I The first thing I wrote was a novel, but that ain't come out yet. That needs a lot of work fixing it. Um, and I wrote, I wrote a bunch of short stories. Then I wrote this at sort of tail end of 2019. Um, but it wasn't ready and I knew it wasn't ready and I went away from it. Uh, and then I sort of last year, I went back to it and did a complete top to bottom rewrite on it. And the structure's the same. The characters are the same. The dialogue's the same. It was just, it, it was, it was just, it was just a bit clumsy. I hadn't got back into the swing of it fully. Um, so this one's actually had more edits and rewrites than most of the things I do. Uh, because I I tend to edit as I go along in a way, because the way I write is I'll write as almost like a stream of consciousness. I don't plan. I'll just sit down and I'll write it and then I'll go through it and go, well, that bit works. That bit doesn't cut that bit, move that bit there and do it like that. So I'm kind of editing as I go along. But the this one, yeah, this one had quite a bit of work on it because uh, I think it's had like two or three different incarnations. Always pretty much very similar and the same sort of story in the end. But yeah. Yeah, so that's an interesting question, that. <laughs> oh great. Oh cheers, Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> just got back from the gym. Mr. Exit. Well, just start the video from the beginning. Press the press the little button in the corner. It's not hard. <laughs> Thanks for ordering the book, mate. <laughs> Much appreciated, sir. <laughs> now, Callum says, I often have humour in my work. Do I set out to write something funny or does it, it just happens? It, it, just, it really just happens. I don't think I could write something completely serious, like with a gun to my head. Uh, it's just my personality coming out. I mean, I, I'm just raised on carry-on films and old British sitcoms and, and it, it just... It just comes out. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's a, like David Green's um, review on Amazon. He says he likes to think of it as the um, what does he, how do he call it? Carry on Mendy's cosmic horror universe or something like that. But Carry on Mendy's kind of sums it up. It is horror with with that kind of British humour. But I like I I've always liked humour in horror as a counterpoint because. It blindsides you a bit more, doesn't it? If that happens to you, because one minute you go, "Oh, that's really funny." Oh my god, he's dead! You know, I like <laughs> that kind of thing. I like pulling the rug out from under people. Uh, <laughs> what drabble did Spiffy? 
It did actually start out as a short story. It was intended uh, for an anthology like set in the 20s, uh, which had a 3,000 word limit. And I think I went over that in the first chapter, uh, or at least in the second chapter. Yeah. Who would play me? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've always kind of thought maybe Peter Butterworth or somebody like that. Maybe Sid James, you know, maybe Jim Dale, you know. I don't know Kenneth Williams. I I'm not I'm not cool enough to be played by Kenneth Williams, you know. If I could get anyone to voice an audio book, who would do it justice? <laughs> unfortunately most of the people i'd love to get to do the audio books for it are dead unfortunately um uh, boris johnson <laughs> i'll be joking um who, who, oh man that's a good question and you mixed me because fry would be the uh, the obvious uh the obvious one tom baker Tom Baker. There you go. I think he I think he'd be awesome. <laughs> Frankie Howard. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Titty ye not. Yeah. Right ho. Thank you guys. Thanks for your questions. Um, right, so one last thing before we go. Uh, I've got some banners and stuff here. Uh oh, I've left that up. I'm being an idiot again now. The Tom Baker, yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, I'm confused myself now. Righto, yes. So, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about Spiffing, which is a novella, and it's out now from Red Cape Publishing. You can get hold of a copy by going mybook.2 forward slash Spiffing. Uh, Red Cape Publishing is there. So if you want to check out their other stuff, I, I seriously recommend you do so. There are some cool anthologies, and I seriously, I, I really recommend if you're into your weird, like really weird cosmic horror kind of stuff. It's even got a bit of fantasy to it as well. I really recommend the, the Vegas Rift uh, by David Gray. I really recommend that. It was a really good read. Okay, so again, if you want to be entered into the prize draw, all you've got to do is the phrase so get that down give me a photogen book and i will enter you into the draw uh right yes so thank you very much for joining me i'm tim mendes if you want to check out all my other literary misadventures go to my website which is timmendeswriter.wordpress.com uh also while you're there if you sign up to my newsletter it's right at the top uh, you'll get a free cosmic horror novelette put on your happy happy face just for joining. You don't have to do anything. You just get a free book. You know, there you go. Uh, okay. So thank you all. And I will speak to you all soon. Take care. Good night. <laughs>